welcome to the Merging Life and Money Show, the live podcast dedicated to helping professional women achieve financial wellness by merging the emotional and practical sides of money. I am your host, Marie-Jo César. Thank you for being here. Today, I will dive deep into a topic that is relevant to each and every one of us, regardless of our backgrounds, jobs, or lifestyles. The importance of taking control of our finances. It's no secret that money will, you know, while not everything in life, plays a significant role in shaping our lifestyles, security, freedom, and overall happiness. In a world where the economy fluctuates, prices escalate, and enforcing expenses occur, financial control is not a luxury but a necessity. Taking charge of your finances does not just involve keeping track of dollars and cents. It's about empowering yourself to make well-informed decisions, ensuring your hard-earned money works for you and being equipped to secure a comfortable future for you and your loved ones. It's about navigating the ebbs and flow of life and and predictability without losing sleep over financial worries. So why don't we as individuals give it the priority it deserves? Maybe because we think it's complex, it's time consuming, or perhaps it seems like a far off concern when we are struggling with immediate challenges. But let me tell you, understanding and controlling your finances can be one of the most Liberating experiences, a step towards a future where you are the master of your money, not the other way around. Welcome to the Merging Life and Money Show. I come to you live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to share skills, knowledge, motivation, and the enthusiasm you need to achieve financial wellness and live your life with means and meaning. In today's episode, I will dismantle the misconceptions, simplify the complicated, and hand you the reins of your financial journey. So get ready for an enlightening ride into the world of personal finance control. The journey to some financial health is a deeply personal one. It's about choices, decisions, and habits that you cultivate over time. So each individual has a unique relationship with money, influenced by a myriad myriad of factors like bringing past experiences, belief, and current circumstances. Recognizing this relationship is the first step in making positive changes. Improving your financial health is not about earning a six-figure salary or winning the lottery. Instead, it's about making conscious choices with what you have. It's about deciding to save before spending, choosing to invest in your future, and opting for long-term gains over short-term gratifications. It's also about creating a budget and sticking to it. Analyzing your expenses and asking yourself, do I need this? before every purchase. Taking control of your finances means deciding to educate yourself about money management. It means seeking help when you need it and using tools and resources available to you. It's also about making the personal decision to break away from harmful financial habits and adopting healthier ones. These decisions as small as they may seem, compound over time, leading to significant improvement in your financial health and overall quality of life. They offer you the freedom to live your life on your terms, alleviating the stress associated with money worries. So in today's episode, I am diving headfirst into a topic that's a game changer for everyone taking command of your financial situation to secure a brighter future. I will begin by addressing the importance 
of taking control of our finances, highlighting how mastering your money can bring about unparalleled freedom and security in your life. Then I'll delve into the personal decision-making process that's at the heart of improving your financial health. I'll explore how conscious choices and habits shape your financial journey and how even small decisions can lead to significant improvements in your financial wellness over time. Following that, I'll focus on three pivotal points. First, I'll stress the need for acknowledging and taking responsibility for your current financial situation and understanding that it is reversible. Second, I'll discuss the necessity of understanding the why and how behind your current financial status, allowing you to avoid past mistakes and set a more promising course. And finally, I'll guide you through the process of developing a realistic, attainable financial plan with resilience and commitment at its core. Now that I've set the stage and explained the fundamental principle of gaining control over your, your, your finances, let's transition to the first point. This stage is often, I would say, the most challenging yet the most critical one in your journey to financial freedom. It's all about recognizing and accepting your current financial situation. This initial step requires courage, honesty, and a bit of introspection. So let's delve into, into it and uncover the importance of taking responsibility for your financial circumstances and realizing that no matter how dire things may seem, it is absolutely possible to turn the tide. I will first address a fundamental aspect, the importance of identifying past financial mistakes. So looking back might seem daunting, but acknowledging your past mistakes is a cornerstone of learning and personal growth. If you continually ignore or downplay your financial missteps, you risk repeating them, trapping yourself in a cycle of poor financial decision making. Every financial mistake, big or small, offers a wealth of learning opportunities. Overspending on non-essentials, ignoring savings, accruing high interest debt, or not having a budget are common errors that most of us have committed at some point in life. But these mistakes aren't just about money lost. They are about the habits and behaviors that lead to that, that lead you down the path. Identifying past financial mistakes helps you understand your behaviors, tendencies, and triggers. It offers in, insight into your relationships with money. Are you impulsive spenders or careful savers? Do we prioritize gratification? Um, how to say it? Do you prioritize instant gratification or long-term health, or long-term financial health? Are you reactive or proactive in your approach to money management? Answer to these questions can provide a clear picture of where you stand and what you need to change. Also, identifying past mistakes is not about dwelling on them or feeling guilty. It's about embracing them as learning opportunities and using them as a springboard for change. So once you understand where you went wrong, you can set the right course toward improved financial health. Now, I would like to focus on the vital role of introspection and self-awareness in identifying and challenging destructive financial beliefs. Financial beliefs often formed in our early years and reinforced over time plays a critical role in shaping our financial behaviors and decisions. For instance, if you have grown up believing that money is the root of all evil or have to have money to make money, these beliefs might be limiting your financial growth without you even realizing it. 
Introspection is the process of examining your inner thought and feelings, whereas self-awareness involves understanding your emotion, strengths, weaknesses, drives, value, and goals. Applying these practices to your financial life can lead to significant breakthroughs. Through introspection, you might find that you spend money impulsively to cope with stress or that you avoid thinking about retirement because it makes you anxious, particularly if you are not prepared for it. On the other hand, self-awareness can help you realize that your fear of taking financial risks might be preventing you from making potentially beneficial investments. So by identifying these destructive financial beliefs, you can begin to challenge and replace them with healthier, more productive ones. It's a process that requires time and patience, okay? But it's an essential step toward taking control of your finances. Remember, the goal is not to castigate yourselves for your beliefs or habit, but to understand them better so that you can change them in ways that support your financial well-being. So as I wrap up this first point of today's episode, let's discuss one of the most critical elements of financial transformation, persistence. The journey toward financial stability is rarely smooth or linear. It is fraught with challenges and setbacks. Okay, no question about it. There may be months where unexpected expenses throw your budget off track and moments of temptation where you want to splurge rather than save. But remember, these are just bumps on the road, not dead ends. Persistence is the driving force that will keep you moving forward toward your financial goals, even when the going gets tough. It is important to remember that setbacks are not failures, but opportunities to learn and adjust your strategies. Falling off the financial wagon is not a reason to quit, but an invitation to get back on with renewed determination. So be patient with yourself. You didn't develop your current financial habits overnight, and changing them will also take time. The key is to stay committed to your financial journey, to keep learning from your experiences, and to maintain an attitude of resilience and optimism. Finally, know that you are not alone in this journey. Don't hesitate to reach out for help or support when you need it. Whether it's seeking advice from a trusted friend, reading up on personal finance blogs, or even consulting a financial professional, there are plenty of resources out there to guide and assist you. So remember that it's not about achieving financial perfection, but about steadily moving toward better financial health. So stay the course. Remain persistent and never hesitate to reach out for the help you need on your journey to financial freedom. Now that I've delved into recognizing your current situation and understanding the importance of introspection and persistence, let's segue into the second point of today's episode. This is where you take a step back to understand why you ended up in your current financial predicament. It's about tracing your financial footprints to identify what led you to where you are now. So why and how you got there? I will start with a vital aspect, understanding the importance of identifying past financial mistakes, okay? So as the say goes, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it, okay? So this wisdom is equally applicable to your financial lives. Your past financial mistakes serve as your unique financial curriculum. 
teaching you invaluable lessons about money management, the consequences of poor choices, and the impact of ignoring your financial health, whether it's accumulating high interest debt, failing to save for emergencies, overspending on non-essentials, or not planning for the future. Each of these past mistakes tell a story about your financial behavior and attitudes. So identifying these errors is not about indulging in regret or self-blame, but about gaining insight into your financial habits and patterns. It's about understanding the choices that led you into financial instability so that you can avoid repeating them in the future. Take this as an opportunity to reassess your past financial actions critically. What were the main missteps mis you took that led to your current financial situation? Perhaps you weren't aware of the importance of budgeting, or maybe you were using credit card recklessly. Whatever it was, acknowledging this mistake is a first step toward ensuring they are not repeated. It's only by understanding your past can that you effectively navigate your future financial journey. Next, let's discuss seven telltale signs that you may need to strengthen um, your financial acumen. Your current financial position is often a result of multitude of decisions you've made along the way. It's an accumulation of your past actions, behavior, and choices related to money. The ability to look back, reflect on these decisions, and understand why you made them is crucial in taking control of your finances. So let's start by identifying some scenarios that often lead people into financial turmoil as they can serve as a wake-up call and can guide your journey toward better money management. One, you have no idea where your money is going. If, you're, if you struggle to remember your latest purchases or often find yourself with more months than money, it's a sign that you are not in control of your finances. Effective money managers know their spending habits and avoid financial surprises. They know exactly where each dollar goes. Two, you don't have a plan. Life can be overwhelming. And without a plan, it's easy to fall into financial trouble. Knowing the life you want for yourself is the first step to creating a financial plan that serves your aspirations. So living without a clear financial goal or plan is like embarking on a journey without knowing the destination. Three, hope is a big part of your financial strategy. Folks, while optimism is crucial, hoping that things will work out financially is not a viable strategy. While you cannot predict every possible event, you can prepare for unforeseen circumstances by having an emergency fund and adequate insurance. Four, you don't know your numbers. Being in control of your finances means knowing your income, your expenses, your debt, and your net worth. Track your money diligently for effective management. Five, your money is always on your mind. Excuse me, constantly worrying about um, bills and check bouncing. Well, I won't say check bouncing anymore. Card not um, being accepted at the at the cash register, um, or I should say, or card card being declined indicate poor money management. It's time for a change. A well managed financial life runs smoothly and with less stress. Six, you are making only the minimum payment on high interest debt. Paying just a minimum on high interest debt means you will be stuck in debt much longer than necessary and end up paying far more in interest over time. So focus on paying off your debt more 
efficiently. Seven, you and your partner fight about money. Money disagreement can strain relationships, okay? They are often indicative of deeper issues like different values or goals when it comes to finances. Instead of becoming defensive, listen and acknowledge your mistakes, then work together to improve your financial skills. Identifying which one apply to you ended in the situation and learning how not to repeat those mistakes moving forward. In short, understanding how and why you got into this financial position might sting a bit, but it's crucial for growth, like ripping off a Band-Aid, quick pain followed by healing. Remember, knowledge is power. Once we know better, we do better. The fact is that by understanding these signs and recognizing them in how what what how to say that uh, the fact is that by understanding these signs and recognizing them in your own life, you are better equipped to start addressing your financial shortcomings. Now that you've recognized your current financial situation and understand how and why you ended up here, it's time to move on to the next stage, formulating a plan. Remember, understanding is the first step to change, but without action, your understanding is in vain. It's not time to apply what you've learned to create a realistic, attainable plan that will set you on the path to improve financial health. So let's transition to the third and final point of today's episode. And let's explore how you can take control of your financial future. In any journey, having a destination in mind is crucial. And the journey, journey towards financial recovery is no different. So your first step in this planning phase is to set an end goal. What does financial success look like for you? It might be paying off all your debt saving a certain amount for retirement, buying a house, or being able to afford certain experiences and luxuries. The beauty of this goal is that it's personal to you. There are no universal end goal for everyone because we all have different dreams, different aspirations, and different circumstances. Your goal should be motivating and challenging, but also realistic and attainable while keeping your current financial situation in mind. Remember that your end goal is not a random number you want to hit in your bank account, but a representation of the life you want to live. It could mean freedom from financial stress, the ability to provide for loved ones, um, or the liberty to pursue your passions. So by setting this end goal, you are not just planning for better finances, but planning for a better life. So after defining our end goal, the next step is to break down this big, perhaps daunting objective into small, more manageable milestones. These milestones serve as checkpoints on your journey toward financial recovery. They make your end goal seem less overwhelming and provide you with a clear path to follow, making your financial journey more navigable. So let's say your end goal is to pay off a substantial debt. So your milestone could be paying off a certain percentage of this debt every few months, or perhaps reducing your spending in specific categories by a certain amount each month. These smaller objectives not only make your goals more achievable, but also provide opportunities for small victories along the way. So achieving this milestone can boost your motivation and give you the satisfaction of seeing tangible progress. It turns the process from a grueling marathon into a series of rewarding sprints. 
Remember, your financial journey is not just about the destination. So celebrating these milestones make the journey more enjoyable and sustainable as well. So as you've identified your past financial mistake or set your end goal and milestone, it's now time to address the issue to those common problems I uncovered earlier. So if you discovered you are unaware of where your money, go, your money is going, implementing a budget is a great solution. So by categorizing and tracking your income and expenses, you can gain control over your money and ensure it's being spent on things that truly matter to you. There are numerous budgeting apps and tools available that can simplify this process. Remember, a budget is not there to restrict you, but to empower you. Now, perhaps your issue was not having a plan. The solution here is to start planning, keeping your end goal and milestone in mind. Set a financial roadmap for yourself that aligns your daily financial decisions with your ultimate financial goals. Maybe you identified hope as a major part of your financial strategy. If so, replace that hope with action. Build up an emergency fund to safeguard against an expecting job, job loss or expenses. Invest in adequate insurance and start saving for retirement. If you find that you are making only the minimum payment on high interest debt, consider methods like the avalanche or snowball method to tackle this debt more aggressively. You can also reach out to your lender to negotiate better terms. So addressing these issues head, head on might not be comfortable, but remember, you are striving for long-term financial health, and sometimes that requires short-term sacrifices. The good news is you are not alone in this journey, and you are already on the path towards a healthier financial future. Finally, the pivotal component of your financial recovery plan is the creation of a budget and the discipline to adhere to, to it. A budget is essentially your personal financial blueprint. Okay, It's a tool that will help you allocate your funds in alignment with your values, your priorities, and your future financial goals. So creating a budget involves listing all your sources of income and detailing your expenses. So by having a clear picture of your income and spending, you can identify areas where you may need to cut back and areas where you may have, you know, a little leeway, a little bit more leeway. So this can also help you determine how much you can realistically save each month, which can then be funneled into your emergency fund, retirement account, or toward debt repayment. Now, remember, your budget is not set in stone. It's a dynamic tool that should change as your financial circumstances and goals evolve. So make regular time, um, what, what I'm trying to say here, make regular time, perhaps monthly or quarterly, to review and adjust your budget as needed. Okay. The challenge, though, lie not just in creating a budget, but in sticking to it. It can be tempting to devi deviate from the plan, especially during the initial stage or during time of stress. However, remember your goal, look, your end goal, the financial success you envision for yourself. Each time you adhere to your budget, you are taking one step closer to that vision. So sticking to a budget requires discipline, yes, but it also requires a change in your mindset. So view your budget as a tool for empowerment, not restriction. It is, after all, guiding you toward financial stability and freedom, and it's not that a goal worth sticking to. And let me repeat that, okay? After all guiding you toward financial stability and freedom, and it's not 
that a goal worth sticking to. Now that we've explored the journey to financial wellness in depth, from acknowledging your current situation to understanding the root of your financial issues, and then developing a realistic and workable plan, you've come to a pivotal moment in the discussion. I'm going to wrap up the conversation with a compelling conclusion and more importantly, a call to action that can motivate you to take the first step toward taking control of your finances. So let's move forward because remember the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So let me wrap up and summarize today's show. I've journeyed through the vital steps toward achieving financial wellness. I started by emphasizing the importance of recognizing your current financial situation and discussed the value of introspection and the courage it takes to acknowledge and identify past financial mistakes. This awareness is a foundation for meaningful change. Next, I delved into understanding the roots of your financial troubles. I highlighted the need to look back and learn from the past, identifying habits or decisions that may have led you down the wrong path. Now, remember, these are not failures, but rather lessons to guide you on a more prosperous path moving forward. Finally, I tackle the task of creating a realistic and attainable financial plan. I stressed the importance of setting an end goal for your financial recovery and establishing concrete milestones to keep you on track. I suggested practical solutions to address your identified financial issues and emphasize the absolute necessity of crafting a budget to guide your spending and your saving. Remember, okay, remember that the key to financial wellness lies in not just creating this plan, but more importantly, adhering to it. So it is this consistent action toward your financial goals that will bring about the change you desire. I will add that while the journey towards financial health may seem daunting at first. The challenges may seem insurmountable and the road winding. I want to assure you that your journey can start today with a single step. And this step could be as small as setting up a budget or as significant as paying down a part of your debt. The key is to begin. Remember, it's not about taking gigantic leaps but rather making consistent strides toward your financial goals. Whether that's becoming debt-free, saving for a dream home, or securing a comfortable retirement, each step you take today brings you closer to these goals tomorrow. But trust me, you don't have to do it alone. So reach out to financial professional to financial literacy group, to a good friend with books, and engage in forums. So use these resources to empower yourself. And remember that it's okay to ask for help. Be patient with yourself and celebrate small victories along the way. You have the power to change your financial future and you have the courage to take control of your money. So start today. Take that first step toward financial wellness. You can do this. And I'm here cheering you on every step on the way. As we come to the end of today's episode, I want to leave you with a challenge, a call to action. I challenge you to take control of your finances and start building a sustainable financial future for yourself. Don't wait for a perfect time because honestly, there will never be one. The right time is now. 
So take a moment to recognize where you stand with your finances. Face the situation, no matter how scary it might be. Understand why you got there and what mistakes led you to this point. Then, armed with this knowledge, start to formulate a realistic, achievable plan to improve your financial health. Now, it's not just about setting budgets and tracking expenses. It's about changing your relationship with money. And remember, financial independence is not a destination. It is a journey. It's about building a lifestyle that is within your means and aligns with your core values and long-term goals. So this journey will require commitment, perseverance, and sometimes tough choices. But I promise you, it's worth it. The feeling of good financial security and freedom is in parallel. So accept the challenge today. Start your journey toward financial wellness. And let's build a sustainable financial future together. Okay? So that's all I have for you today. And as you know, I like to end my show with a few wise words. And here um, they are. So financial recovery is not just about getting out of debt. It's about setting yourself up for a future where your finances serve you, not the other way around. Now, I want to thank you, my listeners and followers, for tuning in today. By joining me for this podcast, you've already taken an essential step toward financial wellness. It's not easy to face our financial realities, is it? But the fact that you are here listening shows your courage and your commitment to taking control of your financial future. I commend you on your bravery and your decision to invest in yourself. Now I encourage you to take the next step. Apply what you've learned today. Start recognizing your current situation. Understand your past mistake and create your realistic plan. Remember, every step, no matter how small, is progress. You have the power to shape your financial future. Thank you for being here today on the Merging Life and Money show. Stay tuned for more live shows and podcasts covering a wide range of financial wellness topics. I am your host, Marie-Jo César. I will be back again next week. I should see next week Thursday at the same time. Until then, continue merging life and money. Bye for now. (laughs) 